Okay, this is the review for the Fenex HP25 headlamp. Here it is, I pulled it out of here. Sorry you don't get the unboxing, but I already ripped it out of here. Um, it comes without the batteries, uh, if you order it as I did. And I'm not sure the reason for that, maybe because they gave me uh, free shipping. So, you know, the batteries are probably junk anyway. I want to get, you want to put good batteries in here. Okay, so it comes like this. Uh, battery pack is here, lights are here. And I have it all put together right here, which is better to show you. So the strap goes across the top like that. Everything's adjustable for size. I have a big head, it still fits. And I still have a little bit of play here, another uh, inch and a half. So if my head was an inch and a half bigger around, it'd still be all right. So if you have a big head like me, it'd probably be all right. The unit weighs 184 grams without the batteries. With the batteries, it weighs about 300 grams. For you Americans out there that have never adopted the metric system, that means it's about 10 and a half ounces, all of it together, which means it's about two thirds of a pound. So not quite a pound. So it's, you know, it's tangible here. It's pretty, uh, pretty sizable, but you're not going to notice it, I don't think, after a long time. You'll have to get used to it for sure, but if you're just walking with it, I think you're going to get used to it fairly quickly. So I got mine through uh, eBay, and I'll give you the name of the guy who, uh, I, sold, who I bought it from. He had a really good rating. He offered free shipping. I bought two of these for $120 US. Uh, each one is 60 bucks. I thought that was okay considering free shipping and considering I'm in Thailand because we have a real problem trying to get some things sometimes. So once I ordered it uh, from eBay, it took a total of two weeks, 14 days to arrive here, which also isn't too bad considering the free shipping. The straps are pretty easy to put on here. You just, there's a, there's a um, slot here and you put one side of the strap in and then you jam the other side in. So you've got to do that a number of times to, to set it up, but uh, once it's there, it looks pretty solid and it looks like it'll stay attached to your head pretty well without dropping it. There's uh, rotation in the lights, so you can rotate down up to 60 degrees, about seven and a half uh, degrees each click, and there are eight clicks. So that's kind of cool. So when you wear it on your head, you can put it down so you can see what's in front of you without toting your head. The lights sometimes get hot. Um, the light side will get hot. There's even a warning on the front that says hot. On the back, it's not supposed to get hot on the battery compartment at all. So hopefully that's the case. So try it out in, in uh, a couple days for, for a few hours at a time and really max out the batteries and see what happens. But supposedly it only gets hot on the light area. And it probably gets pretty hot because these are extremely bright lights. The buttons are here on the top. They're blocked with a plastic piece to start. So you don't accidentally trigger it in your bag. Then you crank it out a little bit to be able to reach the buttons. There's a button for this side, a button for this side. The buttons are well made. They click solidly, so it seems like they're gonna last for a while. When you click it, you gotta, to turn this side on, you have to hold it down a half second and it turns on. This is the spot beam. You can see how bright it is. I think that's, is that low mode? No. That's medium. That's high. I'm sorry. I'm not sure where I am, but anyway, that's the highest. And it's super, super bright. I mean, it's, even though it's not even in my eye right now, it's like super bright. And I actually feel it getting hot in my hand. That's how bright it is. So you have three levels, um, low, medium, high and hold it down a half second to shut it off. On this side you have the floodlight, which is a wide beam. Hold it down a half second to turn it on. It's really weak for the first one, then medium, then high, and then you have turbo, which is double the high. So this one also is extremely bright. Hurts your eyes, it's much brighter than the sun is to look directly at, and you don't wanna, you don't wanna be um, shining this in your eyes. Hold it down for a half second to shut it off. 
Over on the uh, right side is the flood, I mean, is the spotlight, but it's also, it also doubles as the SOS. So if you want to do SOS, it's an automatic pattern, three short, three long, three short. You hold this down for three seconds, and then it starts automatically. And that will go for about 10 hours with alkaline batteries. With nickel metal hydride batteries, you're gonna get a little longer lasting life, and maybe another half hour on the, um, on the max settings. If you're using both lights at full brightness, you should get two hours with alkaline batteries, and about two and a half hours with nickel metal hydride. So it's, it's pretty good. I just ordered some Eneloop Pro uh, rechargeable batteries that are gonna be good for this, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, I may add on something to this video later to show about those batteries. Here we'll get into the question side. Where is the, the unit made? It's made in Shenzhen, China. It's not a US product, it's not a European product, but a whole lot of people in the US wear this uh, for hiking, camping, running, etc. What type of bulbs are they? They are Cree, C-R-E-E. -E. This is like the industry standard for headlamp lights. Um, supposedly they last for about 50,000 hours each. What material is, is the unit made with? So it's all hard plastic, everything that you can see, even this is plastic around the wires. And there's a little bit of rubber in the battery compartment, which comes off like this. Unscrew the knob, slip it off. You have four AA batteries in there, and you have a rubber gasket around the bottom, which seals it from water. Is the Fenix HP25 waterproof? Sort of. It's waterproof in the case of rain coming from any direction, coming very hard. They, they had a 12.5 millimeter nozzle spraying 100 liters of water a minute out of it, and they sprayed it every which way from every angle, and it's not supposed to let any water in at all at that, at that rating. It's called IPX-6 rating for water, and it is not any good for submersible submersibility. Cannot submerse it in the water and expect it to hold. Um, I don't know how long it would last, probably a few, I would say a few minutes, you know. I mean, if you can put an iPhone in the water for 10 minutes, you can put this in the water for 10 minutes, I would guess. I wouldn't try it if you really care about your unit though, because <laughs> it's not rated for that at all. How many light patterns does the, does the Fenix HP 25 have? So there's three on this side for the spotlight, and there's four on this side for the flood. Uh, so in varying combinations of that, you can get 20, or you can get 19 different combinations. Then plus the SOS light, which is 20. So 20 total combinations of, of light pattern. Does the HP25 remember the last brightness setting that you used for each side? Yes. It does not remember the SOS setting, though. How long will the batteries last at full power with uh, spot on high and flood on turbo? It will last about two hours with alkaline batteries. It will last about two and a half hours with nickel metal hydride batteries. How long will it last if only one side is on high? It will last about four hours with alkalines, a little bit longer for nickel metal hydride. So that really isn't too bad, you know, because the, the beams are very bright. Problem is, you're not going to use one or the other. I don't think you're going to use some combination. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be between four. It's going to be between four and uh, ten hours of use generally for four AA batteries. Does the headlamp get hot with use? The light side gets hot. So you're not supposed to touch it up here after it's been on for a while. It even has a warning that says hot. The battery pack is not supposed to get hot at all, so you won't feel it on the back and front of your head. You probably won't feel it on the front of your head anyway because you have the plastic piece that goes against your head, then you have the, the light which rotates out, so if it's out at all, they put some distance between the two pieces. Then you have the strap, you know, before it hits your head. You're probably not going to feel it that much. You'll feel a general warmness, but I don't think it's going to get hot on your head. Just do be careful not to touch the front. Now, what is it good for? 
I would say it's great for a couple things. It would be great for cave exploring. Anything where you have to see like far ahead of you on the ground, like with a spot, where the spot will help, it would be great. So caving would be great. Running, I would put both, I would put both of them on high and you can run down a trail no problem. It's probably good for trail running except the weight of it. You know, it's almost a pound jumping around on your head with these straps. I don't think it's going to be that comfortable. You could wear a hat and then wear this over top of the hat, which I would probably do, but still you're going to feel it. I mean, the weight is, the weight is there. It's not, it's not fly weight. Uh, there are other options for headlamps that are much lighter weight. The Petzl's in particular, P-E-T-Z-Y-L, I think it is, um, are really quite lightweight. They use three AAA batteries and they use it in the front compartment only. So you don't have the back heavy part and the front. You just have the front and it's a little bit lighter than four double A's. Is it good for hiking? Yeah, I would say it's probably excellent for hiking, camping, something like that. Fixing your car, because the brightness levels on the flood are just amazing. You know, for fixing your car, something that's close within a couple meters would be really excellent. How is it for looking for wildlife? Like I go herping, it's called. So I'm looking for reptiles, uh, amphibians in the forest, in the rainforest, in the jungle. So would it be good for that? I think it's going to be really good for that. I've already tried it a little bit here around my house. I already found a snake and a, and a lizard within 20 minutes. So already, you know, that's a pretty good um, first impression on me. So I'm excited to try it in the forest. I'm going to go in a couple of days and really give it a good test. Um, what I found that, and you'll see in the video that's coming up just in a few seconds, because I'm going to show you the beam um, differences. And I took it out in the back uh, off my balcony and shot up into the trees so you can see what that might be like. It's going to be excellent for that. For trees, it's going to be amazing because you have the floodlight and then the spot just makes it a little bit brighter. It's okay. But uh, the floodlight is what really helps in the trees because you're going to see the underside of every snake and lizard, you know, very easily contrasted against the leaves because it's so bright. On the ground, it's going to be excellent. The flood is excellent for close, um, close to your feet, maybe two, three, four meters, up to five meters maybe. Um, after that, I don't think it's going to be so good. So within five meters, it's going to be good. Can you put on the high on the flood and then the high on, or the turbo on the flood and the high on the spot and then can you see farther? Sort of, but, but the problem is, and you'll see in the video coming up, when you have them both on, the flood is so, is so much brighter than the, I mean the spot is so much brighter than the flood that it hurts your eyes, you know, because you're, Picture your night vision, right? So any little bit of light effects. You're looking at the bright beam in the center. It's so bright. It's, it's 10 times as bright as the side, right? So if you're looking at that bright for even a second, it screws up your night vision and you can't see anything within the flood range because there's like a, you know, there's some after effects in your eyes from that. It's so bright. So it's not going to be so good for using them both together on the ground like that. Um, what it is really excellent for is on the street, if you're uh, cruising on the motorbike or in the car maybe and you're looking out the window, can be really good for that because the, the beam, the, um, the spot beam goes so far, it will go 50 meters pretty easily and you'll be able to see a snake that far away if you want. Um, the flood is not going to help much on the motorbike at all but you should put it on anyway just to get a little bit of ambient light. Um, one bonus was uh, I was looking the other night and I was walking around and way up ahead of me, 100 some meters, maybe 120 meters away, 120 yards for you Americans, that I saw an eye shine of two dogs that were coming and they were coming pretty fast. They were, they were in a sprint. And uh, so I got to see them way out there, you know, and I guess it's because of, I think it's because of the beam, but who knows, it could be the flood but I saw it so far away. So that's one of the, one of the um, probably little talked about benefits of this uh, headlamp is that, you know, because when, when I have a flashlight and I'm walking around, 
I only see what I'm looking at here. If I shine way, way ahead of me, I'm going to see the dogs, but I'm not really going to do that much. So that, I can see where that's going to be helpful because dogs in Thailand are just, you know, crazy at nighttime when they see people walking around with the light. Okay, so this is made in Shenzhen, China. I will put the uh, contact information if you want to go direct to the company and get it. Uh, probably you should just go to eBay like I did and buy it off this uh, company in Hong Kong, which sends with free shipping worldwide. Um, they, they did a great job. Both units work fine. They're in new condition. Shipping took 14 days free. So, you know, I, I would recommend them. Uh, if you have any questions about it, uh, I have a web page that I created on thailandsnakes.com and you can go see that. I'll put the link um, in the description. And also I put another, I did, just did another overview at my Crank 101 site and I'll put that link in the description as well. I hope you liked this review and I hope it was helpful for you. And I hope that this will match your needs and that you pick one up because they, they seem really well made. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep one for sure. I'm going to sell one to a buddy, I think, because I think he would want one too. Um, and then I'm going to review a couple other headlamps in the, in the next couple of days. One of them is already at the post. I have to go get it. And uh, then you can compare and see which one might be better for, for what you want to use it for. All right, so I hope you liked the video. Thumbs up. And tune in for some more uh, review videos. I'm really, uh, I'm really into this. All right, cheers. Okay, I'm walking into my uh, room that I never use. This is our spare bedroom. And I just set the ISO for 6400, which is uh, approximately what I'm able to see when I, was, uh, when I had the door open there. So right now I'm standing one meter away from the wall. And I'll show you the spot beam first. So as you can see, it's it's intensely bright. So I need to uh, crank this ISO way down to uh, f this is at 400. It's approximately what I see it at. So you can see the spot beam in the middle is very very bright compared to on the side over here, right? So at one meter away from the wall. It's hard to see what we have. So I'm going to go back two meters. And there you go. You can see there's a wide, uh, there is a wide flood component to the spot beam. But the sensor, you know, is right here and it's very tight. It's only a foot, it's a foot across at two meters. And then I'll go back three meters. And you can start to see the scope of it. The, the wide beam is at least five meters on that wall and the spot now is about just over a foot, just over a foot, you know, not very much. So hope you can tell something from this. Okay, there's the next brightest level and I'll shine it on the, uh, my daughter's uh, castle here. And then there's the next brightest level. So this is the highest level, this is high. And I'm cranking it down a little bit. So that's cranked down three levels uh, towards the floor for the adjustment. And you can get an idea just how bright the center is compared to, to other things. Like I'll focus on the light there. See when <laughs> it's almost that bright that it that it blanks it out. I mean, it's so intensely bright. But you can get an idea. I, I can even look out the uh, door here into the tree a little bit without scaring any of the neighbors. We just have a, it's a big tree out in the back. But you can see that the spot is really just focused on the center. So that tree is about five meters away at least, and the beam is about two feet wide uh, at the bright part. Maybe just a little more, two and a half feet, maybe almost one meter wide. But you can tell, like looking in the trees with this, even just the spot, that tree now is about five, five meters away. That's about seven meters away. And at the top there, that's about 
nine meters away and it's still very clear. So again, this is on the high setting on the flood, on the spot rather. And I can even spot that that building is about oh 10, 20, 25, 25 meters away and it's very bright. I could find a snake there for sure if I was looking just in that small spot where the beam is, where the bright beam is. But that bright beam down there is only about two and a half meters wide where I would like to have it about four meters wide. Okay, let's go back inside and I'll show you the um, floodlight. So I'll shut this off and then start over with the floodlight. Okay, so this next beam will be the flood. This will be, I'm standing three meters back from the wall. And let me see if that's low or not. That's low, that's medium. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is low and you can't see anything, right? If I'm a meter away from the palace, you can see it just barely. And this would be no good at all for snake hunting, so you wouldn't use the low setting at all. Second level, uh, starting to get, you know, quite a bit better. I guess if you had to, if you were trying to save batteries, you could put it on this level and you could see things at your feet very well. Pretty well, I mean, not as well as I would want to see it, but, but you could use it. It's usable. Here's our bed with a bunch of stuff on it. This is just our spare room. So again, at three meters back from the wall, the beam is about, it covers the entire wall from that side to that side. So that is about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six meters, uh, six meter wide beam. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up another notch. You can see it's, this is at 90 lumens, so it's fairly bright. And this is definitely okay for, for short range uh, snake, snakes on the ground. And I'll show you when we get outside how it's excellent for the trees. This, fl this floodlight is just amazing. And then crank it up. This is the turbo mode. And it's double the high beam. So you can see it's exceptional for uh, up to about 3, 4 meters is okay. Maybe even up to 10 meters on the, on the flood like this on the turbo mode. But, you know, for me... After about four or five meters, it seems like that's about that's about the range that I could I could see snakes with. So let's take it outside real quick, and I'll come down on the beam. That's low. That's medium. So the beam is medium. You cannot see that tree at all. That is uh, four meters away, four or five. Crank it up one more notch. You can start to see that tree. I can't focus on it yet. And then on the turbo mode, you can see the tree, but it's not all that great, is it? That's five meters. But what is great is if you're under a tree and looking up, you can really see. You can really see quite well. And then if you, I'm gonna crank on the uh, spot. So there's the spot that's just on low mode. That's medium. But on medium, it seems very, very good. On high, it's incredible. You can see easily to the tops of the trees. Uh, you can see easily six, seven, eight meters. The reason you can see so well in the trees is because it just reflects back. You know, the leaves reflect back so well. So it's really good for the trees. And you can see on the street, if you were on the street and you were cruising uh, on the road, and you were looking for snakes like that, it's easy to see on the road tens of meters in front of you. Uh, I can even hit the street out there easily. Here's the, um, here is the building behind us that is, uh, you know, 25 meters away right there at that corner. You can see it quite easily. I could see a snake there easily. So it's good for road cruising and also um, in the trees. You can see in the room with both lights on max uh, it's you know quite bright it's so bright 
it lights it up in here entirely. It's, um, you know, where that beam is, where the spot is, is just, you know, brilliant. It's, it's brighter than day. Okay, so that's what I want to show you. Um, the wideness of the beam, like from, from three meters back, is just, uh, it's just the length of our entire wall, which is, uh, I think it's, let me see how many tiles I have here on the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost ten. Yeah, it's four meters, uh, almost five meters. So that gives you an idea of the, of the exact width of the flood. That wraps up the nighttime test. Uh, later I may add something to this by showing um, where I actually go herping and what I can see. And, uh, so far, I'm really happy with the light. I think it has some great uh, possibilities. Super excited, you know, to get out there and just use up a couple sets of batteries and see what I find. See if I find snakes that I might not have found before, you know, with just using a flashlight like I usually do. All right, that's it. I'm sweating. I have no air on in this room, and I'm just dying here. All right, cheers.